Good morning guys, Josh here. Today in this video, we're gonna show you how to fine tune the LVS32 transducer live scope settings. We're gonna go through it all today. Um, I'm gonna show you from point A to point B to get your, your graph dialed in perfectly. So you're not, not gonna wanna miss this one and we're gonna do some fishing as well. So stay tuned, enjoy the video. All right guys, I'm running an Altrex. Um, you can get these little clips here from Ashmore Marine. Uh, they're, they're really, really nice. They hold that cable on there, allows it to move in and out. So you don't mind it. Um, something I like to do here was, uh, I put a, um, wire, I built the wire that keeps that, that cable from getting caught down in here and pinching and getting it cut in half. Um, I've done that and it's no fun. So anyway, you want to build you one of them. It's really cool. Kind of holds it out there. When you buy the kit, they come with a little, they come with a little round clip, but it breaks. As soon as you hit a dock, it breaks. So I built this, it kind of, you know, it'll bend out of the way and stuff, but, um, that's pretty cool right there. All right. So let's get into it. All right. So as everybody knows, I've got my transducer mounted on the barrel of the Chola motor. Um, there's several reasons why, um, in theory, why I mount this transducer here. Um, a lot of guys have it here. A lot of guys have it on the shaft. Um, so let's go and in, get into it. So the reason why I mount mine on the barrel is because in theory, like I said, this is my opinion. I could be dead wrong about this, but I'm running the LVS 32 double wire, the old style, the gen one transducer and my image is crystal clear i mean crystal clear i can see in the rocks and i can see everything so um i think this has a lot to do with it okay so basically what i did is i mounted it on the barrel for the reason of when it's mounted on the shaft here and you got your transducer looking up here this right here is a is, this is a big magnet and what i think is this is creates a force field around it in the water you know uh water is a good conductor of electricity so i'm thinking that this this force field around this and this beam happen to shoot through this force field is causing an image that's not so great um there's guys out there that do have a really good image uh with that that being on the shaft of the trolling motor but i think that they've got that perspective mount that pulls it out here just a little bit so then beams kind of kick away from that um but if it's mounted on the actual shaft and the transducers right here i think that's just a bad idea i think because the beams the way they come out of this 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 um this transducer i think they shoot through this this head of this trolling motor or at least the force field around it and i think that's what's giving you a bad image um so basically what i did is i mounted it on the barrel and i've got the eight degree mount as you can see right here and what i did is i mounted it flush the the bottom this is your down down imaging this is your mid imaging and this is your forward imaging. Um, so what I did was I mounted it flush with the bottom of this. Okay, so now my, my, my beams have nowhere to, they don't have nothing to shoot through. I get a full image. Um, and I put this rubber piece in there for just kind of to keep uh, interference down. I don't think it really matters. That piece is plastic, but I did it anyway. I put it in there for interference reasons. Um, you probably don't need it, but I would put one in there anyway um pretty much that's the gist of it okay so that's we talked about that now if you've got your 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 transducer on the on the uh the uh um shaft here uh let's talk about this real quick hold on okay here we go so let's just say that your transducer is mounted here all right if you can see down the line of that transducer it's going to be kicked out just about like that right there you know, you still got you still got a little bit of that beam hitting that hitting that that um sh that that head of that trolling motor. You know, um, that beam is you know it 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 don't go just straight out. It has a little bit of a it, it widens as it comes out. You know, so I still think it hits that. And but then then also you have the magnet field that you know the force field that's around this the the electric electrical current that this is creating that you have to shoot through as well. And I think that's why a lot of these images are really bad images. Um, so when you got your transducer mounted on the, the shaft here, you, what you need to do is center it. So what I do is I'm, I make a mark on the, sh on, on the, the actual bracket and the, the trolling motor here. And what I do is I'll go out and I'll pitch. If, if it pull, if it's pulling to the right, I'll turn it just to the left a little bit. And if it's pulling to the left, I'll turn it to the right just a little bit until you got that thing dialed in. You want to be able to throw this thing out directly in front of the trolling motor and it, and it picks your bait up instantly. Okay. Also, 
from here to here, Garmin says seven inches. You could do this. Go out to the lake and put your trolling motor in the water, and we'll do this today, and pull it up. As you're pulling it up, watch the image on your, on, on your screen up there. Um, pull it up. You'll notice that image change changes. So what I do is I leave it loose, and I slide it up and down the shaft. So, some, of them, I'm, I'm, some of them come way up here. Um, I slide it up and down the shaft, until I got the best return on that bottom image. Um, because that being said, once again, you know, it's all about the fine tune adjustment. Like I said, mine, I don't have nothing to shoot through. I get right, it shoots straight to the, it shoots straight to the bottom of the, the, the lake. So I don't have to worry about, you know, going through anything, but try adjusting it up and down. And, and you can do this by pulling your cord here, you know, pull, pull it up like this, up the trolling motor up and watch your image you'll see that image will change that that image will actually get really good it'll it'll actually get really better so try that and then remember to adjust it this way and this way until you got that image just right and then once you got it just right take your black magic marker and write it on there um or or white marker and white write it on there uh make a mark on there so that way um if it gets moved or anything you can always dial it back to the original spot um so that's how I have this set up. That's, this is how I have this set up right here. So let's get out on the lake and let's go through some settings. All right, guys, I'm going to completely set mine to factory, re, uh, factory defaults for you so you can see me walk through these um, settings. Let's see, settings, system, system information, reset, reset settings yes all right we're going to reset the settings here all right guys we've got it reset i'm going to hit agree united states english choose to quit up save okay power boat Minimum safe diff is three foot. Shallow water alarm, no. Vertical clearance. I'm just in a bass boat. 500 feet. Collision time, one minute. All right, we're going to accept. All right. All right, so now we're going to go into the pan optics. That's completely, that's completely the old image right there. So um not too bad we're shooting at 113 feet it's 50 foot in front of us that's not a bad image that, i mean that's 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 a fishable image right there that's not bad but we can make that a lot a lot better so all right let's go let's go um first off let's go to let's hit this let's go backlight let's turn that up so everybody can see it um back all right here we go and, and and your backlight really can can really affect and this is something that a lot of people overlook you see how bright that image is now you turn that backlight down just a tad bit now watch this look at that image now so it's a it it, it, it it's when it's all blowed out and saturated from the color you can actually turn that backlight down and get you a little bit better image so all right here we go so menu we're going to go on the gain. My gain, I never run it more than about, I, I go between 50 to 70. That, that's the range that I, that I, um, I run it in. Um, I never, ever really try to adjust it higher than that because you get what is called uh, color, uh, a power, you know, color uh, saturation. That's the word I'm looking for. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this dude um, about 65 okay we're gonna go there boom all right there's that we're gonna go back we're gonna go depth range i i always adjust my depth um every time on the on the boat we're sitting in 28 foot of water so we'll do that okay then we're gonna go forge range we know that that's odd um we don't we don't do the um auto so we're gonna zoom it into about um 61. now listen when you're searching for fish shoot it out to 50 or 50 to 70 
when you get closer to what you're wanting to fish zoom it in for crappie if you're bass fishing leave it leave it a shot way out there you know never go more than more than a, a cast if you can only cast 60 feet then shoot it at 70 feet there's no sense of blurring out any more than you have to all right so um let's go to sonar setup appearance color scheme we're going to go to copper i like copper it's easy on my eyes um black emerald is another good one but i'm i'm a copper guy you can adjust this how you want to want it okay color game this is a lot of people say turn this dude way up look how much it it blows that image out it saturates that image you never want your color gain to be more than five percent of your overall gain rather five so, percent no more or no less so i'm at i'm at 65 so i'm gonna go with my color gain i'm gonna go around i'm gonna say 67 five five percent guys this is important right here so back up we're gonna go to color limit the color limit is for the newer transducer um you can you can really saturate it out now that looks like active target and um the other the other uh, hummingbird hummingbird uh, mega life this 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 new uh this color limit is for the new transducer i don't use it some guys will say that that it really helped it up i think that uh to me it really doesn't make a difference neither here nor there um okay so we're gonna go into layout i'm gonna turn my grid overlay off i don't need to see my lines i have adhd real bad so it that just bugs me i i don't need to know how big the fish is i've done this long enough and i've had this you know long enough that i know how big that fish is going to be um all right so reverse range i don't i'm not fishing behind the boat i'm fishing in front of the boat i don't ever fish behind the boat um, so I go to a minimum. I turn that at a minimum, which moves that back just a little bit. That's a pretty good. You can go full, um, or uh, you can hide it completely, which then you don't see nothing under the boat. I want to see a little bit under the boat, so I do minimum. Um, let's see here. On screen control, blah 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 blah. We're good there. All right now, noise rejection. Uh, Noise rejection. A lot of people they'll leave it like it is. You know, it's it's all it's it's on high right now. I've got it on, or it was on medium. Um, I put mine on high. Now, if your image starts glitching, or if you have a a um, if your image is really a uh, posy jerky looking, and you get a delay, that's a power issue. You need to look at your power source. Okay, because you should not have any delay in this. And if it delays, you've either got a a processing issue or your um your um your power support supply is uh you've got you've got something that you need to do with your power supply um either be the the wire size or um the connections or i would look at how many volts you're shooting to it um etc okay so tvg time variable gain yeah, hold on quit hold on guys sorry sonar set up tvg time variable gain what that does is it takes more clutter out of the water see how it lightened it out you can really go to high it really filters that 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 particulates in the water um if i'm fishing deep water i absolutely use my tvg if i'm fishing i would say but 12 foot and shallower do not use your tvg so um today we're going to be fishing a little bit deep so i'm going to leave it on low um ghost rejection I always put my ghost rejection on medium. Um, if you look here, it doesn't really do much, but I use I like medium. That's just been my setting. Um, you can do with whatever you want there. Kind of go by what, how your image reacts to that. Okay, um, data low insulation. So your focus, this is what lines your bottom up here. We're kind of getting out here. Let me scoot up here just a little bit closer to this pillar. Right there's a bass chasing. That's what I was catching yesterday. There's a bass chasing that bait ball right there see you see him right there there's a there, right there that's a bass see him eating it oh that's cool boom he's in there eating um that's what i was doing yesterday and caught a uh eight pounder so we're gonna go back we're gonna go back that that image is pretty that's pretty much it right there i mean there's um you can go like i said you can go to your focus right here your insulation your focus what that does is if you see stitching real bad in your in your bottom is 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 off you know you got a bottom like that 
what you want to do is you just adjust it. See how I, I broke the bottom up? What you want to do is adjust it where that bottom lines up perfectly. Um, usually you can leave it on auto. If it doesn't work, you can adjust it just a little bit more. I think that's perfect right there. All right, so all that set up, all that set up, all that set up, all that set up. Now my gain, I like a little bit of fuzz in there, but for the most part, that's, that's kind of where I, I keep my gain. Now that right there, folks, that's a good looking image right there. I can see all my I can see all my bait fishing. The sun ain't up yet, so it, we don't got light penetration in the water. Um, let me get up here closer to the rocks up on the bank, and I'll show you what the bottom looks like. You can really see in that that bottom detail. So what we're looking at right now is a bridge piling. Um, there, right here, this is shad. There's a fish right there, right there. You can see him on the piling right there. Um, right there, there's two fish right there. Boom, boom. There's two two brighter returns. So what we're going to do is we're going to drive over here to the bank and look at this. So hold on. Moon last night, so they're probably not going to eat. Got you that time. There's a good one right there. Oh, big crappie. Against the graph. That one. That's a nice one right there. 13, 14 inch fish. All right, guys, let me show you what I'm doing today. I'm using the Crappie Reapers. Uh, this bait, uh, it, there's not a name on it, so I don't know what it is. But what I'm actually doing is they want a really tiny profile right now because it was a full moon last night, so they fed most of the night um, and migrated. So um, during full moon phases, they don't, you know, it's, a, it's just a tough bite. So what you want to do is you want to go super small. So what I'm doing is I'm cutting the ends of these tails off and using those with obviously a, a 1 8 ounce eye hole jig and some of the uh, eye hole jig niblets. Just like that right there. That little tail dances, you know, comes off that big old two and a half inch bait, but it gives that perfect little profile. And man, I'm telling you, it, they can't they can't resist it. But I mean, that tail just sets there, wiggles. But that's what I'm using right now. Um, drop it down on their nose and just slowly raise it up. Pow! They hit it every time. So uh, I'm I'm using today. I'm using the uh, the 12 foot precision jig uh, rod by Catch the Fever. Um, fantastic rod with a uh, fluter reel. Uh, it's awesome. So let's get up there and catch another fish. A nice one right there. Good solid 12, 13 inch fish. Crappie right 
love this time of year right here. Get this big old slab wide. I mean, that's a nice slab right there all day long. Let's get another one. there all right guys we're gonna wrap it up today uh, I hope you I hope them settings on the live scope help you all um, just play around with it a little bit you know some of the settings you can adjust to your own liking everybody's eyes are a little bit different and uh, I hope you enjoyed the video today as always give me a subscribe if you like my content follow me on uh, TikTok and uh, Facebook and until then we'll see you out on the water have a good day